Welcome to Let's Be Honest. I'm Liana Ross, and I'm a licensed mental health counselor. I'm the assistant director of Gooding Wellness Group, and I'm on a mission to answer your real and honest questions, unfiltered, while also giving you the real and honest opinions of a mental health clinician on pop culture and trending topics. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Let's Be Honest podcast. I'm Liana Ross. I'm a licensed therapist and your host. If you follow me on social media, you know I'm a fan of Bravo and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and therefore we have a lot of drama to talk about. But specifically today, we're talking about Garcelle Bouvet and her son Jax, who was being harassed hardcore online as a result of a feud that was going on in the show, which is crazy. Um, so to talk about this topic, I'm joined again by Sawania Germain, LMHC. She provides therapy for moms, mamas to be, families um, transitioning back to work after maternity leave and adjusting to this new life of having a child. And if you want to look into her, you can go to at the mama therapist on Instagram. Welcome, Sawania. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. I'm grateful to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you. So let's get into it. I'm going to start out with just like for people that don't know what happened, kind of just giving a brief run through of what happened in this conflict because it was all over. Yeah. Um, so what happened was in the show, there was a feud between Garcelle and Erica Jane, um, which is kind of like pointless of what it was about, but they were kind of going about, you know, their usual drama. And because of that, I feel like a lot of listener, or I'm sorry, a lot of viewers are very hardcore of like who they support. So all the people that were pro Erica were coming after Garcelle via social media, but not just Garcelle, her 14 year old son, Jax, which like, where did he even come from? Why are we doing this? He hasn't, he's not even barely in the show. It was really kind of just terrible and they were coming after him in regards like to being racist and really just like bullying this 14 year old to the point where bravo had to step in and make a post and a statement of like please don't do this i mean they said more than that but that was basically what it, they said and um all the uh all of the Housewives on the show also came out and made a statement and thankfully it did get shut down, but I think it raised a really big issue and a really big concern of like one cyberbullying is terrible. And then also like the racism and like just the intensity of all of this. So I'm curious for you, Suania, why do you feel like as a mom, because there's two aspects here, it's like as a mom and a woman of color. So like, I guess, why do you feel like it hurts so bad from both standpoints? What was your view on it? Yeah, definitely. Well, and also too, and, and Garcelle, she's Haitian and I'm Haitian American actually. Um, so, you know, Garcelle, I just feel like, you know, her son Jax is 14 years old. He is a kid, right? And historically I've seen this where unfortunately children of color who are like who are underage they're treated like as if he's an adult but you know they made some like really hurtful intent like nasty comments like a comment like putting kneeling on his neck or something like that that i saw um mm -hmm. and you know it's hurtful as a mom you know for your any you know for your kids go through bullying i've been there i've experienced that where my kids have been bullied but let alone around their race their identity who they are it's very hurtful you know her kid did not sign up for this to happen to him. Um, I'm glad that, you know, it was handled the way it was, but these people are wealthy, you know, they have, you know, the back and the back them up, you know, but I mean, as a woman of color, it's very hard to see that, especially, you know, in the times that we're living in, um, it's very difficult. So I think that, you know, it's really important and to stress um, with your children, um, with my, you know, with my children as a mom of color, um, their identity really, you know, making sure that they're strong in who they are, their identity, um, validating their experience, you know, uh, what you know, what's going on for them, empathizing with them, what's going on, and whether it's cyberbullying or bullying in school or in other spaces, you know. Um, but, you know, definitely, I think that, you know, I, I'm curious, you know, you know, if he was another race, would he be, you know, if, would he be treated differently? You know, he is a minor. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so it was it was very nasty, very hurtful to hear. Um, I'm glad that it was handled the way it was handled, um, but it was taken too far. Like it really was, and that's the the hard part about being on such a public platform like that is that you you're subjecting your family to these things at time, right? You're yeah, really subjecting your family to the uh, things like this, you know, situations like this. Right. And as adults, it's like, okay, it's hard to deal with 110%. Like, but like, maybe if we see a harmful comment, we can at least like, vent about it, and then also reframe it. But like, as a child, like, how do you even do that? Like, you know, like, that can really impact someone's own self esteem. And I'm curious, like, so I saw that Garcelle had Jax make a statement via her social media. What do you think about Garcelle's Garcelle doing that? Like, do you think you would have done the same if you were Garcelle Bouvet? Like, how do you think you would have handled that? I think I would have spoke to my attorneys. <laughs> yes, yes, get them on the line. <laughs> I spoke to my attorneys. Um, you know, he is 14 years old. Um, so I think that, you know, she handled it the best way that she could. Um, you know, once again, you know, I don't know if I would even... Honestly, I don't even know what it's like to even be on the show because she's on this public platform. Like, yeah. you know, I'm surprised she doesn't even have anxiety around all this <laughs> to be on, you know, and hurtful things being sent it out. So I think that she handled it the best way that she could. I would have first, you know, I'm sure she spoke to her attorneys around everything. But um, and also, too, I don't know, you know, if I would want my son to be also be making comments on the IG. That's the other part, too. Like. You know, you know, you know, that's the part as well. Like, I'm I'm a little old school, <laughs> call me that. But like, you know, like, I don't know why the 14 year old was on, you know, on yeah. there. Um, so that's just my personal opinion. That's not even clinical. That's just my personal opinion. I just feel like, you know, adult business is adult stuff. And then so I just don't understand how he got involved in that. And then it went to the next level. What I think is that I don't know. This is the only reason why I think that he was somewhat involved is because I don't know if you saw that episode where they were at Garcelle's birthday party and Erica was super drunk and said to him like get the f out of here or whatever and they were like oh my god why would you do that and that became a really big center of the the show at that point where Garcelle had Erica apologize a few times and she did and and they moved on so it's almost like they took that the, the viewers and used him as like a culprit right like you know like i mean that's the only reason why i think they kind of kept him in the storyline and then attacked him and then the other sons on the on, i don't, I don't want to you know but this other son is also on the news too recently yes yes with hooking up with raquel and his whole business and but that's another father yeah so yeah the same father yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I think that um, the way that Garcelle handled the situation, I think is the best way that she could. And it is extremely hurtful to see that, you know, but this is not uncommon. You yeah. know, a woman of color, I deal with this a lot, you know, so it's it's not, unfortunately, it's something that I've I've faced, I've dealt with, my, my children have faced people mm-hmm. or someone told her that, he didn't like her skin color at school or first day of school. So, Oof. you know, I've had to deal with that as a parent. And I think it's very important as a parent to, well, any type of bullying to advocate. I think, you know, for, you know, first validating here, your, your child, trying to remain calm, right? I put, try to put my hand on my chest, try to take a deep breath, try to stay calm so you can hear what they're saying and be mindful of anything that's triggering you as a parent. You want to be able to think clearly and hear where they're coming from and validating them. And then hearing the fact, like their experience around what happened, right? Gathering that and then, you know, getting some outside help and then kind of brainstorming with them, which is what I did when, um, what, okay, what are we going to do? What's the solution? What, what do you think? What do you need from me? What do you need from mom, you know, and dad to help you, right? For you to feel safe, for you to feel better, you know? So safety is the key here. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that our children is safe, that they're feeling comfortable um, and that, you know, if any, you know, anxiety is coming up and educating them on what anxiety looks like because they not may not even know of course cannot know you know so yeah i think that's the really biggest piece i know it's it's tough uh, you know we have to have these conversations these days yeah that must be hard to explain to a child like why that person made a comment 
like that they may not mean it. Like, the, I don't know. Like, how do you even explain it? And then also what can, comes up for me because this has happened um, from cl- people that I work with when like the parent of the person who is bullying doesn't do what you would like them to do. And like, that is difficult. So it's like, we try to advocate for the kids, but you're kind of like alone in that. Not alone, but like the other parent is kind of making it difficult. Like, have you ever run into that? Hi, my name is Gordon Gooding. I'm the founder and director of the Gooding Wellness Group here in Cold Spring Harbor, New York. We are a group of mental health providers that offer individual and family counseling here on Long Island. We believe the first step for caring for your mental health is to talk and to learn about it which is what this podcast does such a great job of. If it has a name, someone else has been through it, and so can you. If you ever need a professional that cares about what you are facing, please feel free to reach out to us. Our counseling services are available throughout New York State through our teletherapy service, and we also offer in-person sessions in our beautiful offices here on Long Island, New York. You can reach us at goodingwellness.com or by calling 631 351-2940. Remember, there's nothing that you need to face alone. Until then, keep listening, be deliberate with your mental health, and keep it honest. No, no, I've I've never run into that. No, no, no. I've never been... Well, you're saying the bull, the bullier, the bull, the one who's bullying. Yes, yes. No, no. Oh, wow, that is lucky. (laughs) <laughs> I heard some stories but that is I'm glad to hear that um but it is sad to hear that like you know we have to have these conversations even as at a young age yes no no I mean I don't remember the, as a kid having these conversations you know I don't know the world we live in today is just much different that we have to have you know I, with, with you know my kid was at five years old at the time and I'm having wow. have, yeah so I have a lot of books you know that I you know and shows that we watch around bullying and what that looks like and, you know, you, you know, and empowering them and really working on building, you know, self-esteem is really important. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, I've never experienced that. You got to tell me those stories. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you after. Um, so in addition to the things that you've already shared, because we're not Garcelle and how do we realistically deal with this? Um, or I guess, how else do we realistically deal with this? Of course, since we're not celebrities and don't have it at the level of magnitude as she does with lawyers and yeah. uh, all of that stuff, how do we deal with that as parents? Um, I think as parents, like I was saying before, you know, really hearing the child out, validating them, hearing their experience, trying to remain calm, brainstorming with you and your, your partner, if they're there around, and the school as well, mm-hmm. if it's happening at school and the child on how to best proceed best proceed and the social worker um usually the school has a social worker or a therapist a psychologist who's on staff that could help guide you guys to have some type of meeting in the minds or discussion with the other uh student um and it's not something to be ignored because it could really snowball into something that's much larger um so i think as a parent really you know brainstorming you know Try, you try to hear your, 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 your child out, not personalizing everything too much because that could cloud our judgment and being able to really be effective in trying to work a solution with our child and really um, working on their, their self-esteem, you know, um, as the, the parent, really hearing them out, you know. Um, I have some uh, parents who be like, what, that's not true, or they'll yell, start yelling when they're hearing what happened. Yes. And, and that's what I mean by think, being able to stay calm and so you could think clearly, right? Because let's say you're a parent who's bullied and then now you're hearing your kid being bullied. It's like, what the... Right. <laughs> Stuff comes up for you now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, please try to remain, you know, calm as we can possible and then really collaborating with the principal and or the, the social worker and the other, the other student, you know, um, to come up with a game plan, having resolution, you know, it's not okay for a student to continue to go to school and or on a bus or in a space yeah. or well online and feel unsafe. Safety is the biggest priority. So, you know, as, as the parent, making sure that, you know, you're their biggest advocate. Remember that. No one is going to be your biggest advocate but you, you mm-hmm. as the parent. Yes, yes. Perfectly said, which, like, obviously we saw Garcelle do, and I think any parent 
hopefully would do and that like there are other people we can call upon like you said in last week's episode about like being surrounded by support this is another time to have that support whether it's like if it happened in school school psychologist or social worker principal teacher your partner um that you don't have to go through this alone yes definitely. my and also with the bully like it's not okay. Like, okay, are you know, there's certain like scripts that I do with my, um, go over with my clients, like ways that they can respond to the person who's bullying them. Um, so that maybe, you know, maybe a script I'll say is like, aren't you kind of tired of that already? Like, aren't you, you know, like something like that, or if it could, you know, things that I'll go over and rehearse with the, your child, I also suggest too. So when it does come up, they know how to tackle it. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. That is so important. We like need that. Yes, 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 definitely. Thank you. So my one last question, probably the most important one. No, it's not. Um, (laughs) Which housewife from Beverly Hills do you feel like you resonate the most with? Erica. (laughs) I was not expecting that. I love her. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? She I like Erica. She feels. I, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She say, says what she feels. Um, she's strong in her identity and who she is. And I, I feel like I res at this point in my life. Like I really identify with I think with Erica. Minus all like the legal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll take that <laughs> stuff out of there. <laughs> like minus um, all that. Yes. 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 And also too, like she also has like this this her stage version of herself too that I like and that, that separates from who she you know like I I mean I like her you know um in spite of what she's been through and she's a human right yes she's a human at the end of the day yeah I, I agree her. with that like I I think before the legal stuff like if I put that aside I like she was probably my favorite because like she said what she felt she was just herself right like she didn't have to be someone else and I really respect that Yes. Yeah. 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 I don't know what's up with the legal stuff. You know, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, well, uh, that's, uh, we shall see more will get revealed. Yeah. Oh. I know. I know. Oh. Well, thank you, Sawania, for coming back on the pod and talking some pop culture with me. Uh, tell people or remind them where they can find you, follow you, work with you about some of your offerings. You got some exciting stuff. Yes, I could be found on the Mama Therapist on IG. Uh, you can reach me on my website, sawaniadrimainlmhc.com. And you could book a free consultation with me. I also have an upcoming six-week virtual postpartum support group on October 20th. I have a few slots open. So definitely book a free consult with me if you are interested in learning more. Amazing. Thank you. And remember, guys, if you want to submit your question and follow the podcast on IG, head to Let's Be Honest Pod or email your questions to Let's Be Honest at goodingwellness.com. Follow me and say hi at Liana Ross LMHC. And if you're looking to begin therapy with any of the wonderful cl- clinicians that I work with, head to goodingwellness.com. See you next time. Bye.